Okay, this is English 101, week 13, part five. Um, so she talks like, why is it that a white person would want to see, she, this white lady sees a black woman enjoying other black people and feels she has to go in there and mess it up. Why? Because she's not a part of it? Because she's not included? Because she's jealous? Because like, why is she doing that? Um, my interaction with Becky clearly showed that she felt some negative feelings about my joy. I mean, this is, this is paragraph 11 in the middle of it. My interaction with Becky clearly showed that she felt some negative feelings about my joy, though she was unable or unwilling to admit it when I called her out on it, meaning when she like confronted her. She, could, she wouldn't admit it, but that's what she was doing. In fact, she, that she felt entitled to weigh in on my joy in the first place is a clear example of another dynamic at play. People like Becky, because Becky's not really her name, we're just calling her that because it's a, it's a slang term for a type of white lady. Um, People like Becky don't just feel like they can comment on blackness. They also don't think they um, don't just fe don't just feel like they can comment on blackness. They also don't think they need to listen when black people speak. It's just one example of the ways in which black people aren't listened to, but rather talked over. So this her point is that this this woman, um, like, why is she commenting at all? Why does she feel the need to comment? Why does she feel like she has to get in there? Um, and also, not only does she comment. She doesn't listen. She's, the, the, Becky is a white lady who speaks about blackness, which she knows nothing about, and also doesn't listen when black people talk. Um, and, and Roderick says, this is another example of the way in which black people are not listened to, but rather talked over. Okay, good point. Here we go. Let's keep going. Uh, the next section is called Mainstream Media Fetishizes Black Pain. Fetish is an odd word there that you may be unfamiliar with. Um, it's often used to refer to a, like a, a, a sexual thing where you're like obsessed with something minor, like a, like, like a, like some people have fetishized shoes. They just think like women's used shoes are like super sexy. Um, it's like a, it's like when you seize on something and you kind of get obsessed with it, even though it's like a sort of minor thing. Um, or it's like a, it's like something you value in like a twisted way. Um, and so she's, that's what it's being used to, used to mean here. Um, so it's usually, it's often used in a sexual thing. Um, like people are obsessed with shoes, but in a twisted sexual way. Um, uh, you know, freaky dickies need love too. Um, but it, it, here she says the mainstream media fetishizes black pain, meaning like newspapers and movies and TV shows, they, it seems like they enjoy it when black people suffer. And she's going to give us some examples of that. Um, but it is, and, and she'll, she'll give us some examples of it, but it, you can think of your own examples, but a lot of, a lot of white audiences will be very, they don't want to, a movie like Black Panther, um, well, I, I'm going to let her do it. I'm, I don't know why I'm like, I'm saying this ahead of her. Let's listen to what she says, and then I'll expand on it if, if necessary. So she says, um, black joy is also rare because mainstream media would rather focus on black pain. And by media there, she means newspapers, but she also means movies and TV shows. Um, mainstream media would rather focus on black pain. Think about the roles black people occupy in movies and literature and media narratives. Turn on your TV or log into Twitter. You will see black pain and black struggle exploited, meaning people make money off of it. Um, from images and footage of police shootings playing on a loop, to Luke Willis Thompson's auto portrait, to Django Unchained. You will see stereotypes and not the broad spectrum of our realities. And that has real life consequences. Um, so her point is, is that, that a lot of media, so one of the things that makes Black Panther different from, because there are other movies that feature black people. Um, but what made Black Panther unusual was that the, the black characters in Black Panther were smart, they were successful, they were doing really well. And like, yeah, there's a villain and they're fighting the villain, but they're like winning, they're having a good time in the fight scenes. They're like, it's like exciting and it's fun and it's joyful. And they live in a, one of the things that made the movie interesting was that they live, the characters in Black Panther, and, and, and my wife actually pointed this out to me as a key difference between Blade and Black Panther, is that in Blade, there's a black character um, and he's like killing vampires all day. Um, and the vampires are white people, which is kind of cool to watch like a black hero 
killing a bunch of pale white dudes, including, by the way, a cop at one point in Blade One. Um, it, it, and it, it's, you know, it's like, it's, it, there's something joyful about watching a sort of a fiction in which a black hero is killing a bunch of white people when there's so many images in the news of white cops killing black men. So it's, it's like a sort of fun, safe reversal of the formula that where nobody really gets hurt, but it's like a fun fantasy of sort of black people fighting back. What made Black Panther interesting uh, because it was like, I I'm arguing, by the way, that the vampires in Blade are like a metaphor for whiteness because they live by sucking from other cultures and stealing from things. And um, it's like, a, a, just in the same way that America exists, partly because it was built by black slaves. Uh, anyway, that's, that's, that's why I got the vampire metaphor, because the white slave owners in the 19th century relying on black people to do the labor is extremely similar to vampires in movies sucking the blood of the peasants. Uh, and also vampires are very often in movies rich, uh, they live in a castle, and they feed off of peasants, and the white slave owner's wealthy feeding off of slaves and chains. So that's that's the metaphor I was going for. Um, but one that my, my wife pointed out, that one of the key differences between, she's a professor at the MCC, um, that one of the differences between Blade and Black Panther is that in Blade, it is cool to watch Blade fight against white people. Um, but in Black Panther, they're not fighting against white people. They're like their own separate culture that doesn't have anything to do with white people. And that's joyful um, because it's not about fighting white people. It's about having your own world. And in the movie, they have this separate secret country filled with black people. And it's, it's you know, it's, it's technologically advanced. They've got all this cool sci-fi gadgets and spaceships and shit. It's fucking cool. Um, um, so she points out that... Um, that, that, that you, oftentimes when you see black people in movies, maybe it's Blade fighting against, you know, a bunch of white vampires. But a lot of times it's also like black people just like being chained up. Or it's a movie about slavery where black people are in a lot of pain. You see them being tortured. They're slaves. They're being hurt a lot. Um, oh, and and in, in the news you see like white cops actually killing black, unarmed black people for no reason. Um, and she's like, it's cool to see Black Panther because they're like awesome and it doesn't have anything to do with white people it's just like a kind of separate awesome black culture that's also like they got spaceships and laser guns and all kinds of cool technology and shit and everybody looked great um so she has and she gives examples of these things but like Django Unchained for example is a movie made by a white guy Quentin Tarantino and I love Quentin Tarantino but Django Unchained is his worst movie um I fucking hate that movie and I will not go into why because it's too complicated and it has to do with his editor dying and he needs people around him to be like you should cut this movie down but he didn't have it for that movie anyway it's a bad movie um, but it's it's again it's a movie that, that it, you know on the one hand you'd be like oh it's cool it's got a black lead but like it's very much like spends a lot of time on slavery and torture and harming and hurting of black people and Black Panther spends a lot of time not on you don't spend a lot of screen time on the hurting of black people it's on like how awesome that, that they are in the movie um which is inspiring for people to see, and that's why Roderick got so excited when she saw it in theaters. Um, so in the middle of paragraph 12, you will see stereotypes and not the broad spectrum of our realities. Meaning like all you, all you, ever, all you ever see is like slaves being whipped when black people are in, because people are like, oh, how come they're, they're, this movie has all white people and no black people. But then when you put black people in the movie, it's like they're slaves getting whipped. That's not really about like, why can't we have any joyful, happy black people like in Black Panther? Um, uh, and she, and her point is that it's stereotypes, not the broad spectrum of our realities. Meaning, like, in real life, like, black people can be happy. Why don't you make a movie about that? Um, Delia Douglas, a scholar and sociologist who studies the impact of slavery, imperialism, and colonialism on social relationships. Same, just like I She's quoting. She explains why the quote is, the person who authored the quote is important. Points out that, quote, the hyper-visibility, meaning it's, like, everywhere, of black pain and anti-black terror undermines our existence because it contains us. It becomes the only way we can be seen. Like, isn't that fucked up that, like, the only way black people... Like, most... So many black roles in movies are about the character dying or, you know, getting whipped or getting kidnapped or getting tortured or, you know, it's in, in getting water cannons shot at them in, you know, 1960s America or being, you know, you know, shot in slave times or whatever from the 19th century. Um, and her whole point is that Black Panther is, like, a new kind of experience. It's very different. And even Blade, where you have a black guy who's fun and successful does spend the whole movie fighting white people whereas in black panther it's like it's not about white people at all it's not about white people being the main characters it's not even about white people being villains it's just about black people <laughs> it's like a separate thing and they're also like successful black people with like spaceships and laser guns and shit um all right i'll pick this up in the next video